In this video, I'm going to show you how to blur backgrounds in Photoshop. This is actually a remake of one of my older tutorials that I made several years ago. And in that tutorial, I showed you how to use the blur lens filter to create the blurry background effect. But in this video, I'm just going to use a much simpler method that anybody could pick up even if you're just starting out with Photoshop. The first step is to duplicate the original image. You can duplicate a layer by simply pressing Ctrl J on Windows, Command J on the Mac. And I will do that two times. The first copy I will rename to background. In the second copy, I will call foreground. And I'm going to just work on the foreground layer. And what I'm going to do is select the quick selection tool from the toolbar. Then I can click and drag to make a selection around my foreground element, in this case, my friend Cheryl. But if you're in the latest version of Photoshop, then with the quick selection tool, you'll have access to the select subject button, which allows you to automatically make a selection out of the main subject of the image. This uses Adobe Sensei, which is Adobe's artificial intelligence to make the selection. So click on select subject, press OK to discard the current selection. And Photoshop's machine learning technology will make a good guess of what the main subject of the image is. It does a really good job, but it's not perfect. We will have to fine tune the selection. So you can hold the Alt key on Windows or click on this icon here to subtract from the selection. I think it's easier just holding the keyboard shortcut. Alt, click and drag to deselect from areas that you don't intend to select, like these areas in between her face and her arm, in between her fingers. If you deselect her finger like I did here, you can just click and drag to add to the selection. If you clicked on this minus button, you will have to click on the plus button to add, which is why I prefer the keyboard shortcuts. You just hold Alt, click and drag to subtract. And if you want to add, you just release the Alt key, which is option on the Mac, and you continue clicking and dragging to add to the selection. One thing I want to mention is that you don't have to be very precise when making the selection, at least not now. And this is one of the advantages of this method over the method that I showed you five years ago. So just make sure that you have a good enough selection that the main areas are selected. I'll just keep fine tuning the selection just a bit. Got a little more work to do on the hat and in other areas of her body. What I'm going to do now is click on the layer mask icon so that I can create a layer mask on the foreground element. And that means that the selection will become a layer mask that hides everything that was not selected. So we just keep the foreground element. So we took the selection and we made a layer mask out of it. A layer mask hides pixels based on the luminosity that you paint with. If you hold the Alt on Windows option on the Mac and click on the layer mask thumbnail, you will see the actual layer mask. Black hides and white reveals. So everything in black will be hidden. Everything in white will show. And the different levels of gray will give you different levels of opacity. So we have a silhouette of my friend Cheryl. So that's what we're going to keep. I'm going to hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click on the Layer Mask thumbnail to bring her back. And as you saw, the mask wasn't perfect, and that's okay. We'll worry about that later. What I'm going to do now is do the opposite of what we did. We created a layer mask based on a selection. Now we're going to create a selection based on a layer mask. So I'm going to use this layer mask to create a selection. And to do so, all I need to do is hold the Control key on Windows, Command key on the Mac, and click. That will load a selection around the layer mask, the active pixels. And then I can disable it and I can enable the background element. And what I'm going to do now is expand the selection to make it larger so that the selection edge is past the edges of the main subject's body. And the way that we're going to do that is by going into select, modify, expand, this window comes up and all you need to do is select the number of pixels to expand by. In an image about this size, which is 1786 by 1080, three pixels should be okay. In a larger image, you might wanna add a few more pixels. So add three pixels and press okay. And what you really wanna do, what you really wanna make sure is that you have a space between her and the background. I'll press the Z key on the keyboard to enable the zoom tool and then I'll click to zoom in. And you can see now that we have space between the edge of the selection and her body, and that's what you want. 
What I'm going to do now is simply double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. Then I'm going to bring up the fail dialog box. You can do that one of two ways. You can go into edit and fill, but I prefer using the keyboard shortcut shift and backspace shift delete on the Mac. And that brings up the fail dialog box. With the fill dialog box, you can fill with the foreground color, background color, any color that you want, or content aware, which is content that Photoshop will fill based on the content of surrounding areas. So you can simply press OK, and Photoshop fills in the selection with content, making our French arrow disappear, which is exactly what we want. And the fill does not need to be perfect. All we're really worried about is the edges, wherever the selection is, and maybe five pixels in because that will give us the flexibility to fix halos and other problems to the mask when we apply the blur. And that's why this method is more flexible than the method I showed you five years ago. We don't need this selection anymore. All we need to do now is press Control D on Windows, Command D on the Mac to deselect, and we can enable the foreground layer. So now we have our original image back. What I'm going to do now is with the background layer selected, I'm going to right click and convert it into a smart object. You can think about a smart object as a container that holds one or multiple layers and you can apply non-destructive adjustments, filters, and transformations. And we're going to apply a filter to blur the background. And there's actually two ways of doing it. I'll show you both. What you need to do is with this background layer selected, I'll call it background again, just because we lost the layer name. So the background there is selected and I can go into filter, blur gallery, and we'll start with fill blur. And that gives us this point that we can click and drag and place anywhere that we want. So we'll just place it here and I can reduce the blur or increase the blur. See that? But obviously this effect is not very realistic because she would need to be in focus in the area where she's standing on. So to make this more realistic, I can click on the area that she's standing on and reduce the blur. So now there's a smooth transition between the focus area and the out of focus area. All I need to do now is just select this point and just place it directly above this point, like right about here and adjust the blur accordingly. See that? See how we're getting a nice blurry background? So this is one method of doing it. I'm going to click on this checkbox and show you the second method. The second method uses the tilt shift filter. You can select it from within the blur gallery or you can press on cancel and select the background layer and go into filter, blur gallery, tilt shift. Either or will get you here. And this is the point where the image is in focus. These two solid lines indicate the areas that are in focus and from the solid line to the dashed line on top or the dashed line at the bottom, there's a gradual transition between in focus pixels and blurry pixels. So you can just click and drag this down to the area of the image that should be in focus, which is where she's standing on. And you can click and drag on the dash line to control the gradual transition of the blur to create the shallow depth of field effect. And then you can adjust the blur accordingly. When you're done, you can simply press OK. And since we applied this filter to a smart object, we can come back and make adjustments to it. For example, I can double click on blur gallery on the filter label. It brings it back up and I can make adjustments. For now, I'm just going to keep that layer there. I'll click on this arrow to collapse the smart filter to give us a little more room to work with. And I'll enable the original layer and you can see the before and the after. And this is the power of this technique. Notice that the selection was not perfect, obviously. So now I can come back and fine tune it. I can click on the layer mask thumbnail, then from the properties panel, click on selected mask, which will bring up the selected mask workspace. And I can use the sliders on the right to fine tune the layer mask. For example, I can smooth it, create contrast, and maybe shift the edge inward a little bit. And that helps, of course. You can use these settings to get started. Obviously, your image may require more fine tuning. And by the way, if you want to learn more about the Selected Mask Workspace and check out my tutorial on masking, I'm going to place a link down below in the description. And in that video, I cover all these different sliders and how you can use them to extract a foreground from a background. I highly recommend you watching this video. But anyway, I'm just going to press OK to commit the changes to the mask. I could also zoom in into the details 
and I can select the brush tool and paint with black to hide pixels. If your brush tip is a little too big, you can click on this down pointing arrow and from this panel slide the size slider to the left. Or you can use the keyboard shortcuts left bracket to make the brush tip smaller or the right bracket key to make the brush tip larger. So I'll make it smaller and I'll just come in here and paint. So even if you go pretty deep in, we can still see the blurry background because in the layer below we remove Cheryl from the background. We then blur the layer so the blurry background does not contain Cheryl at all. And we can paint on the mask to reveal that background, giving us a whole lot of flexibility. I'm going to undo that last brush stroke by pressing Ctrl Z, Command Z on the Mac. And I'm going to continue fine tuning the image. In your image, spend a lot of time fine tuning it. But in the tutorial, I'm not going to spend too much time on that because I want to spend the time that we have together showing you more powerful techniques that you could use with this method. I'm going to double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. Next, I'm going to show you how to add the bokeh effect to this image. Bokeh are those circular, round, blurry highlights that you see on images. In a real photo, that is just simply how the lens renders out of focus points of light. But obviously, we're going to use Photoshop to create the bokeh effect. So let me show you how to do that. First, I'm going to expand the smart filter and I'm going to click on the blur gallery label to open up the tilt shift blur filter again. Under the effects panel, drag the light bokeh slider to the right and Photoshop will start creating that effect of out of focus points of light. And I'm just going to adjust the blur accordingly until I get the effect that I want. It looks great on the cars, but I don't like it how it looks up here on the top left on this bright sunlight. So I'm not going to worry about it for now. We'll deal with it in a moment. And I'll press OK. What I'll do now is get rid of this big bright highlight. And to do so, I'm going to select the background layer and duplicate it. Press Ctrl J on Windows, Command J on the Mac. And I'll call this layer Bokeh. And this is the layer that's going to contain the Bokeh effect but I'm going to hide the layer. So I'm going to hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask, which hides everything in that layer mask. Then I'm going to go back into the background layer, expand it, double click on the blur gallery, and I'm just going to disable the bokeh effect. So we have the same blur without bokeh. Then I'll press OK. And with white on this bokeh effect layer, I'm going to selectively bring that bokeh effect back. So I'll select the brush tool, make sure that white is my foreground color. So I'll click on the default foreground and background color icon to make white my foreground color. I'll increase the size of my brush. And with the bokeh layer mask active, the little white box, the outline is on that layer mask. I'll paint on these areas to bring the bokeh effect back and I can reduce the opacity or increase it to adjust the effect, but I think this works good enough. And what I'll do now is finalize the image by treating this as a single layer. So I'm going to collapse all of these layers so that you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to select the foreground layer, then I'm going to hold shift and click on the background layer with all the layers selected. I'm going to right click and select convert to smart object. Now I can treat this as a single layer and apply really cool effects using the camera raw filter. If I go into filter, camera raw, you can use these sliders to control the luminosity and color of the image. So I can start with the temperature. I can click and drag to the right to warm up the image. I can scroll down and adjust the highlights. Maybe I'll make the highlights a little bit brighter, brighten up the shadows as well, increase the texture. This is the newest slider in Camera Raw. It allows you to enhance the texture found in your photo. I could also increase the clarity, which is contrast in the midtones. And I can keep scrolling down to adjust the vibrance and saturation. These sliders add saturation to the image. I usually prefer using vibrance since vibrance is a controlled way of adding saturation. It protects already saturated pixels and skin tones. So I can click and drag this to the right. And you can click on this icon to see the before and the after. To enhance the effect even further, I'm going to click on the radial filter, 
which allows me to make a circle and apply all these different adjustments within it. And I'm going to reset the settings just to start from scratch. So I'm going to click on this menu on these four lines and then select reset local correction settings. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag a circle like so from that area. And make sure that inside is selected. That way all the adjustments appear inside of the circle. Then make sure that you have a high feather. The feather controls how sharp or blurry the edges of the circle are. So you want blurry edges for this circle. I'll set my feather to 80. If that doesn't work, I can increase it later, but make sure that it's high. And then you can increase the exposure and make it yellow. So that's like a bright sunlight coming in. And I can also increase the highlights in that area and the whites. We're just trying to create the effect that the sun is peeking through the trees. You can obviously spend a whole lot of time fine tuning the image. I'm just going to press OK and show you one last thing. This method of working non-destructively and applying all these filters to get this effect is really powerful because if I decide to go back and edit my original image, I still can. Let me show you one last thing that you can do now that you have everything set up. You can double click on this layer on the layer thumbnail. That's a smart object. When you do, it will open up this new tab that contains the three layers that we use to create this composite. I'm going to double click on the hand tool to fit it to screen and you can see them. The foreground element, the bokeh, and the background. And if your client, your boss, or you decide that you want to make a change, you can still make that change and still keep every other filter that we applied. For example, one of the things that you may want to do is remove this patch of dirt and fill it with grass. And one of the ways that you would do that is by double clicking on this layered thumbnail, which is also a smart object. So we have a smart object nested in a smart object. And that will open up yet another tab that has this background element. So I'm going to duplicate the background element to work non-destructively. And I'm just going to use a tool to fill this in. Initially, you might think that you could use the same technique we used earlier to remove Cheryl, selecting the lasso tool, making a selection around that patch of dirt, then going into Edit, Fill, and then selecting Content Aware. And that would kind of work, but it doesn't look very good. Notice how blurry the result is. There's not a lot of detail. There's actually a tool that you can use that'll give you much better results. So let me undo that by pressing Control Z on Windows, Command Z on the Mac. I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. And with the selection still active, what you want to do is under the Spot Healing Brush tool, you'll see the Patch tool nested. Make sure that Source is selected. Then you can click and drag this area into a patch of grass like this area here and release. When you do that, Photoshop will match the color and texture and it'll completely fill that third end with grass and it looks much, much better. I'll press Control D, Command D in the Mac, and I'll close this tab, save it, and that effect gets applied onto this background layer like you see here. I can close this tab, save this smart object, and that obviously is also updated on this smart object. So it's an incredibly powerful way to work everything is editable. You can always come back and fine tune everything later. At this point, what I recommend that you do is zoom in really, really close to all the edges of the image and just go and mask out all these little imperfections. Like in this area here. When you're done, you can save your image and they'll be updated on the final composite. So extremely powerful way to work. Also, if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, then don't forget to click on the subscribe and notification buttons.